Good evening, Ron. Thank Hi. you very much for both, all three, uh, for seminars. Wonderful, thank you. My question is that you said that you had the blood of our Lord examined by the Israelis. That's correct. What was their determination of that? Okay. Dried blood is dead blood. Everybody knows that, all right? They can test the blood of the pharaohs, the mummies of the pharaohs, all right? There are certain things they can do. They cannot get a chromosome count by any method I'm familiar with, all right? Things keep changing. I don't profess to know everything. However, there's no way I know that you can get a chromosome count out of dead blood. You can get a DNA and some other things, but not a chromosome count, all right? That's done by living white blood cells. Now then, first of all, in this analysis, I took the blood into a laboratory in Israel. I asked one of the people I work with in, in antiquities, where is a good laboratory that does reliable work? And they said, such and such, such and such. I took it. I just said, please examine this blood and tell me what you can tell me about it. All right? They said, well, look, we're going to reconstitute it. We're going to put it in normal saline and keep it at body temperature for 72 hours with uh, gentle swirling. All right? That's their business. That's great. I said, now, I want to be there when you check it out. They said, fine. So I was back. They checked it out. I said, now, uh, they said, it's human blood. We can tell that. They did whatever tests they need to do. And then I said, take some of the white blood cells and put them in a growth medium and keep them at body temperature for 48 hours. And they said, well, that'll do no good because it's dead blood. I said, would you please do that for me? And they said, okay, we'll do it. So anyway, I said, I want to be there when you take it out and examine it. So I was back there. They took it out, examined it under a microscope, and the one technician called the other one over there, and then they called the boss over there, and they were talking Hebrew a mile a minute there for a little bit, and they looked at me and they said, Mr. Wyatt, this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it. Everybody else has 46. You see, 23 from your mother, 23 from your father, 22 autosomes from your mother, 22 autosomes from your father. You get an X from your mother, you may get an X or a Y from your father, all right? This blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. You see, the ch a child could not have developed if they hadn't had the autosomes from the mother. So all of his physical characteristics were determined by his mother's side of the family, her autosomes. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from the source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? Said it's the blood of your Messiah. Amen. And I assure you, those men's lives have changed. Christ died, and the earth shook, and the rocks were rent. A crack came right down the entire face of the escarpment, right past the left side of the cross hole, and the stone opened up down below 20 feet below God had arranged for the Ark of the Covenant with its mercy seat if you please his earthly throne to be positioned right down there 600 years before in 586 BC <coughs> when the Babylonian army destroyed the city 
when the centurion stuck his spear in Christ's spleen and probably left Interpol to make sure he was dead before he gave the body to Joseph of Arimathea when he pulled that spear out, the separated platelets and serum of the blood of the Son of God gushed out, went down through that crack onto the mercy seat. And that ratified the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The fourth trip I made into this chamber, it was spotless. The furnishings were set in perfect order. The Ark of the Covenant, however, had been placed against the wall, the end of the cave. The end of the cave was a beautiful crystal radiating the colors of the rainbow. Now, I know New Age and all that goes in for rainbows, so the homosexuals and all of that. But God used it first, all right? It's around his throne, and it's around his earthly throne. Now, there's no veil in this setup, so it is the earthly, it's God's temple on earth or his residence where he once dwelt and uh, anyway when I found it like this there were four young men standing in there and I started to say you know what are you doing here and I froze I couldn't move couldn't breathe couldn't do anything one of the people said we are the four angels that have been taking care of the ark since Moses put the tables of stone in it right and they instructed me to set up my video camera with the tripod aim it at the Ark of the Covenant and they went over lifted the mercy seat up I don't know how heavy it is I've never tried to lift it but it's solid gold and the angel said take the tables of stone out of there God wants everyone to see those I took them out all right they put the mercy seat back down over the Ark of the Covenant. I backed away a little bit. The angel came, got the tables of stone, put them on a rock ledge inside the chamber. And I was then instructed to take a sample of the blood from the mercy seat, have that analyzed. And I did everything the angel told me to do. Speaking of the blood and the water presented to our hearts and minds through the power of the Holy Spirit, this is the Father's witness and testimony of his Son. Now in a court trial, a witness gives the testimony. That testimony becomes evidence or proof, right? So what this is saying in our language of today is that the blood and water on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, the earthly throne of the living God, is the Father's proof to the inhabitants of this world that his Son has indeed died for us, that we have been redeemed, and that we can come to him in the name and blood of his Son, receive forgiveness and restoration, so that one day, as recorded in the 22nd chapter, 14th verse of the book of Revelation, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The, pavma, the payment, dear friends, has been made. And in God's appointed time, you will be able to see the proof for yourself. I believe the Ark of the Covenant will stay right where it is throughout eternity. It is God the Father's proof to the inhabitants of this earth that his son died for us. Now, there are some things that are going to happen in the future that will involve 144,000 getting to see that. The Old English word propitiation means mercy seat. Jesus is the mercy seat. By his blood on the mercy seat, we have mercy today and forgiveness of sins. His sinless life is represented by that sinless blood. We have mercy and forgiveness if we break the law and are then repentant. For hundreds of years, the blood of bulls and goats was cast toward the east, creating a vacant western side on the mercy seat. God was planning for the blood of his son to be applied on the vacant western side of the mercy seat. Our salvation was to come through Jesus' blood being applied on the mercy seat of the ark. This was God's plan from the beginning, that Christ's blood would anoint the mercy seat of the ark with the Ten Commandments below. 
thus fulfilling the new covenant and granting mercy to mankind. So yes, the tables of stone are out of the Ark of the Covenant. They're in the chamber on this ledge as far as I know. But when God is ready for this to be shown to the world, and the angel told me it will be after the mark of the beast law is enforced. You understand that? You keep God's law, you have the seal of God. If you keep man's law, which soon will be passed, and if you refuse to keep their law, you can't buy or sell. If you keep their law, it requires that you break God's, and you have the mark of the beast, okay?